It was a little bit chilly outside tonight, and now it's warm inside the house. Oh, well, the wind is tremendous. Yes, <laughs> indeed. But it didn't rain as much as it was supposed to rain, so that's good. And tomorrow is supposed to be really, really nice. Yeah, 60 degrees. Yep. So something to look forward to. Zooming in. Hello, hello. Hey. All of a sudden, I uh, feel like I, I felt like I could go to sleep. I laid down for a couple of minutes, starting to get into a dream. Mm -hmm. And the alarm, I, I made sure I set the alarm because I thought danger. You know, just having a dream about <clears throat> I don't know, four guys coming up the driveway to meet me or something or wasn't threatening, but uh, anyway, it's gone, gone now. So. Now you're dreaming <laughs> that you're here. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, I was uh, then. I was I was thinking this morning how uh, well the dr I always think the dreams are within me, but also I noticed well. The waking state is with it, kind of within me also. Of course, because you're formless. Only if you identify with the body do you think that there's some kind of separation of objects to objects. When you know yourself in a real sense, you're formless. So everything is appearing and disappearing within your own self. You just happen to be sort of front row seats to the appearance <laughs> and disappearance by seeing through this body and seeing this body-based illusion. And, oh, look at all these things to see. Yeah. But in reality, you're formless. And the only way that you say, oh, I was dreaming and then I woke up to come to this little meeting because of identification with something that can wake up. But you never sleep and are never awake and are never asleep. These states are appearing. But you are not appearing. You are to whom all appearances appear. So absolutely, this little talk is going on inside yourself. If you think of the computer screen as the formlessness and all these objects are appearing within that formlessness, but the computer screen is just there to allow for the forms to appear and then at the end disappear. And speaking is happening, but there's no one actually speaking. It's just the formlessness speaking and listening are occurring. Only when I identify with something as a someone is there a speaker and a listener? 
but I create that. <laughs> Because of believing myself to be a body, I create the concept of speaker and listener. But if I'm formless and I know myself in a real sense as that formlessness, and I absolutely have that conviction, then who is speaking? And how can anyone other speak? Or how can any of the speaking be something separate? And how can the speaker and listener be separate? If I know myself in a real sense, this, this is not even a possibility. You know, all this stuff is gradual, very slowly, gradually sinking in where it becomes more, whatever you're saying becomes more and more obvious or real as time goes on. It becomes self-evident. That's what they say, like self-evident. The self is seeing the self as nothing other than its own self and that everything is just appearance within that self that you are. But there are sort of like uh, uh, not proper ways, maybe, but sort of pro like proper ways to speak about it in the sense that uh, only if you're in the body based illusion, there's no proper, there's no improper. Prior to being this, was there proper or improper? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's no like, there's really no journey. The concept of a journey was brought about because of the concept of I am someone else on a journey to find myself. But this I am someone else is a false entity. This It's just a lump of goo that the formlessness and the energy that you are providing says, I am this, but you're not that. That's why when this formless energy, this formlessness, this presence, is removed from the body, the body's just a lump of goo. And yet the presence at believing itself to be other bodies is going to bury or burn this body with complete reverence as to, oh, John, or oh, Keith. Oh, it's so sad they're gone. And we'll show images of that body that was not you. And we'll all say how sad it is that you're no longer here and yet, you haven't gone anywhere. You're just no longer believing yourself or experiencing yourself as Keith. And all the others are no longer seeing you as something separate. They're now just seeing this dead body and saying, oh, we'll miss Keith. And then they'll replay Keith in mind and memory because then that's the appearance. <laughs> So your appearance will continue to appear. You just won't be knowing yourself as something other while this is appearing. And all the people are saying, oh, Keith, he's gone. And here's Keith as a baby. Oh, no, that's not Keith. That's the lump of goo at six months old. And then this lump of goo, Keith ate. And now it's one year old. And then this lump of goo becomes five years old. And then this lump of goo becomes 15 years old. And then 20 years old. And then 30 years old. And eventually this lump of goo is now however old and has passed away. And it's very sad. But in reality, what has happened? Nothing. Grass is growing. And then grass is not growing anymore. But because of identification with a specific form, we think, oh, no. What a tragedy. I am dying. This person has died. And because of identification with the form, that's why the fear of death is there. Oh, look, there is now a dead body. But we don't sit there and really analyze, okay, that's a lump of goo. If presence left this body, this body would also be a dead body. If presence left that body, that body would also be a dead body. But all of this is occurring within your own self. And whether presence is in the body or out of the body or believing itself to be a body or, or not, it is. And there's no gain or no loss. Presence doesn't go anywhere because one body is no longer available. Just like in your dream, if somebody in your dream died, you don't die. 
you could have a dream tonight that there's a war in your dream. Like you said, four guys walking up the driveway and police come and shoot at the guys and they all shoot each other and there's eight dead guys in your driveway. It's sad, yes? All these people that are no longer there? Maybe it's sad that we, were, we thought they were there in the first place. Cool. And then you know, when you wake up, you say, oh, wow. I just dreamt that like police, I called police and they had a shootout with these guys who were here in my driveway and, and nobody had anything. It seemed really real at the time though, until you woke up and you knew it couldn't be real. And that's why when you know yourself in a real sense, this so-called waking dream, waking world, waking state, this worldly body-based existence, you absolutely know can't be real. It can't be true. Does it continue after this body drops? It's not this body. You are not that. You are that to whom all of this creating and destroying is appearing and disappearing and you remain. And just as in dream for a time, you get to see what the hell is going on inside your dream. But it's all a dream. You, the dreamer, are dreaming a long dream. And then you're seeing inside this dream with this body form and saying, oh, look at all this. But then you, you sit there and you remain with your selfless self. Just die, just die. Just the I am, consciousness with consciousness, concentration on the concentrator. And nothing is. Accept your selfless self. There's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no master. Nothing is there. Why is nothing there? Because they're all appearances. And would there have to be something to whom these appearances appear? Yes. That's the reality. And that's what... When you know that, you know yourself in a real sense, basically. Exactly. And the individuality is snapped. It's not that I'm presence in this specific body seeing an imaginary world. It's the fact that the entire world is illusion. That's why Maharaj says, yourself and myself, <laughs> this whole thing is illusion. There, there's no like, you're an illusion and <laughs> this is not illusion. It's all illusion. And only you are, except your selfless self. There's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no master. Nothing is there. But they say that uh, it's our parents teach they us. who? Teach us the illusion. But, but uh, <laughs> as, long, as long as they use words, it's going to happen. It's not like it's... It's good. You're going to get the impression that there is something because of words, language, because of experience. Uh, it's it's sort of bound to happen, and then then you have to untrain. But then you have to untrain it. Well, in presence in the form of mom and dad, create the concept of you, because now mom is pregnant. So two lumps of goo have created a lump of goo, and they say, "Oh, we're having a baby." because presence believes itself to be a mother and a father. And now you come along and they're thoroughly convinced that you are this baby. If there's a feeling of separation and, and a not knowing yourself in a real sense and you're going along in the, the dream, whatever you wanna call it, and here's this baby now. The reality is two lumps of goo, a body factory in which presence Knowing, knowing this has appeared and there's things to know, mom and dad. And mom and dad create the concept of you because, oh, Keith, oh my God, he came in at six pounds, eight ounces or eight pounds, six ounces or whatever. And they take pictures and all this. And as you're growing, you're knowing yourself as Keith. 
but it's always amazing in a sense. Uh, and then, uh, but when you know yourself in a real sense, what was Keith's life? Like, it was a series of experiences in the body-based delusion of believing yourself to be something other. And therefore a, a circle was formed of illusion around the body-based existence that you are not, rather than knowing yourself as the center in which the entire world is appearing. Well, it's all, it's all, both, it's all amazing. It's amazing that we can be deceived. And then it's amazing when you see the deception for what it is, but it, it's like, oh, uh, 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 it's and amazing. Is this that, you that sees the deception? It's amazing that it takes the form that it does. Uh, why, why does it, why does it take any kind of form at all? You know, it's like, Your dream, when you lay down and dream, why is a dream world projected? Simply because there's a knowledge of existence and existence enjoys to create. The creation is not true, but the creative ability is there. The capacity for creation, the capacity to expand is there. But then there's the limited identification with, I am the dreamer or I am dreaming. The capacity to form limitation also is there. Only with identification. I mean, if you dream, and you're not identified with anything within the dream, you still know you're seeing the entire dream. So it's only when you identify yourself with a limited object within the dream and you start to see from that dreamer's perspective, but you know the entire dream has appeared from you and it's formless. You didn't create a form in the dream. And then like, that would be very interesting to dream at night and then you're a form, there's a blank screen and you say, okay, now I'm dreaming this dream. And then boom, it projects. That's not how it happens. Everything is projected formlessly. And then there's identification with the form within the formlessness that is you and seeing all these things. It's so ah, welcome back. I forgot your name, but I can put it in your box rather than user. Renee. Renee, R-E-N-E-E, -E. is that correct? Yes. Okay, good, good. Yes. There you go. Being that uh, what we seem to see is formless, that does sort of explain why it all changes because it can't stay to be anything in particular because it's gonna change, it can't be. No, formlessness doesn't change. Yeah, but that stuff changes. How can it? It can't the stuff can't help change what what appears to be to us as change can is inevitable because it can't something that's formless can't be other than changing because it can't be stable no 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 a formlessness cannot change by its nature right, think about right. the space I'm in the I'm room the stuff, the stuff changes though the it's, space in the room if you threw a baseball through the space in the room the space is not affected Right. I know you don't want to even admit there's anything there <laughs> to change. It's not admitting. It's the fact that it's formless. All the changes are in the body-based illusion of experiencing. Because of identification with the body, the illusion of experience is created. I am doing something. I am experiencing. But you're not a body. So take away the body and tell me then how you are changing. Yeah, the body changes. That. From from the changing perspective, you can't. What, from that from perspective, what perspective is the changing? Only the know. only the false is changing. The real right, never right. does. Yeah. Everything you see may change, but you do not. Even as a small baby, the same baby that looked in the mirror will look in the mirror when you're 90 years old and 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 you know combing the last three hairs on your head. That is the same. That's why they call it like the Krishna, the baby Krishna or whatever, the, 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 the same consciousness. You are not aging. You're not, there's no change in you. Yeah, I All had of this. the changes are body-based and in the illusion. 
I had this unusual, I thought it was an unusual experience for me. I, I was uh, going over this stuff or, you know, I was, anyway, it just appeared that I went back to the state of when I was a child in school and I could feel, I felt like, I, now I felt like I, I feel exactly the same way I felt that. Like I couldn't tell, it wasn't a particular year, but in school there was when I was very young, but it was like, there was absolutely no difference in the feeling of being there as, as being here. It well, was understand of, that you've never experienced anything. And even that was, you know, that's part of the illusion too, but it was a temporary experience. And I don't know why it turned out to be, you know, it seemed it seemed significant that it, that there was no difference between the present me as a present and me as a child but uh, but without a body how are you having any past present or future yeah. i mean truly how, how? even yeah. when you know yourself in a real sense you can look back and say oh okay i you know maybe even you look at your pictures of yourself oh this was me in second grade this was me in fifth grade but you know yourself in a real sense You've never experienced anything. And now think about the experiences that you never had. <laughs> Using the mind that can only give you images and projections about the body-based illusion and now you're thinking about experiences you've never had because you know yourself as in a real sense and you're not body. So mind wants to sit there and sort of like uh, play an amnesia game and say, remember this? Remember your sippy cup? You love this cup. Are but you saying every experience I've, that I think I've had, I never actually had? Is that you've what you've never saying? had any experience. Everything is within the body-based illusion because of identification with the body. Now that you know yourself as not a body, what experiences did you have, could you have, or will you have? It's hard to pick one. There are none. <laughs> the body is going through these various things. The space in the room is just there. The space in the room is not aging. The space in the room is not counting time. The space in the room doesn't see night and day. Yes, these things are occurring within the body-based illusion, but you're outside of that. Even though you happen to be seen within the body-based illusion, there's a telescope to see within the illusion because of uh, the body offers a gateway to illusion. But you're not identified with the body. You know you're not a body. So you merely use this body as a telescope to see inside your own self. What's going on? Literally the bubble. There's a bubble. Everything's going on inside. There's a you peeking inside from out here. Because everything's occurring within you. Even when you sit there and you say, my thoughts, without a body, where are these thoughts? Identification with the body, you think the thinker is in here. Without a body, thoughts are what you used to call world. You are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. Body is not your identity. If body is not your identity, then who are you? You are that, that always is, always was, always will be. A million bodies are created, a million bodies are destroyed. That's why they call it about the dissolution of the universe. And you still are. Every experience you've ever had was due to identification with a body. And now you know you're not a body. So there's no experience, no experiencer. 
spontaneous action in the moment without an experience or experiencing anything. Just like the dream. Everything that happens in your dream, you wake up, you don't sit there and try to remember all the experiences you had in the dream, nor do you identify with them. Why? Because you know it was a dream. Well, now you know yourself in a real sense. So how are you going to identify with objects within your own self? Which one is you? The mind is still trying to turn it into an experience, though. So. That's fine. You're not a body. So mind is a flow of thoughts. And what is it going to attach to these thoughts? Where are these sticky thoughts going to stick if there's no Keith that's created a thinker thinking thoughts? Thoughts are just passing. Okay, let them pass. What experience can formlessness have? What experience can the space in the room have? Think about this. Just the small room that you're in right now. Maybe you're in a huge room. Sorry, I'm not trying to be judgmental. <laughs> Whatever size room you're in right now, what is the space experiencing? Even if you say, I turn up the temperature, it's very, very hot in my house. The space is not experiencing the heat. Heat is a quality of the air. The space is more subtle than the air. My mind doesn't necessarily recognize this space as any, anything, well, you know, except imaginary. Well, you could say sky. Hmm. Okay. Is the sky experiencing a windy day? No. Clouds are experiencing, you could say. They're moving across the sky very quickly, but that's just the five elements. And the clouds certainly don't say, oh my God, it's very windy. I'm not enjoying this. I wish the wind would stop. Nor is the sky saying, hey, these clouds are moving, man. Like they didn't move yesterday. Sky doesn't know it's sky. It provides the background for what we see, clouds, weather, all these things are attributes or layers on the sky. But sky is sky. And only within the body-based illusion do we have attributes, even the concept of attributes or the concept of layers or the concept of illusion. Prior to being this, there's no illusion. After leaving the body, there's no illusion. Prior to going to sleep, there's no dream. After waking up, dream is gone. Dream is a layer on what we could call sleep. Because you have deep sleep and there's no knowingness there, then suddenly this I exist mixes with a little bit of, oh, there's existence. Boom, dream world is created. But now you say, okay, more subtle than that, this I exist, this dream, this waking, this I am, I exist, selfless self, all are layers. All are attributes on the attribute less. Because without something, there would be no waking state, no dream state, no deep sleep, and no I exist. These are all just states. You are not a state. 
you're the one to whom the states appear or the, the one whom layers of illusion are appearing. The fact that you exist is self-evident. What you think you exist as is not true. Because if you think you exist, if you think you exist, it's, um, you're, you're creating an other out of yourself. Of course, the concept of duality. I exist. I know of my existence. Therefore, there's two things. There's me and this sense of existence. And the sense of existence now creates just, Maharaj says spontaneously, it's just an entire world, just as you sleep. The dream world is not, <laughs> it's not built. I think we talked about this before. You don't go into the dream and it's like, okay, I am dreaming. And then the grass appears. Then a pond appears. Then you start populating with little people. Then the sky appears. Then more people appear. Then there's language appearing. No, it's and it's there. Spontaneous existence because of the fact of the knowledge of existence creates the concept of duality spontaneously. And when you have this concept of being born, I exist and there's a world. And as soon as I know myself as something separate, because mom and dad say, oh, Keith, you're so cute. And play with a little rattle and everything. And then boom, oh, there's mom, there's dad, there's me. And this me is called Keith. Prior to knowing yourself, as, as Maharaj says it was in a dormant state, meaning the sense of existence was there, but there was no sense of existence as something other than myself, because there was no concept of a me as something. So the dream, any dream uh, figure can't be other than you. Dude. Of course not. How? Somebody sneak in your dream? <laughs> How somebody sneak in your dream? Just as it, whether it's a dream or not, uh, even the waking state, nothing can be other than you either. Exactly. The same consciousness creates this waking dream world as creates this dream sleep dream world. It's just one formlessness that appears as form spontaneously because of the knowledge of existence. And that kind of explains why you say the scenes just passing, you see scenes passing. Exactly. Because there's no you here. There's not an anchor in this body-based illusion to say, this is me. You know, everything is just appearing and disappearing. And there's no concept that there's something here. There's not a, of course you touch your, oh, okay, there's a body here. We cannot deny it. there is a body here. But the formlessness, when it's not, limiting in itself in any way, you know the body is here, but it's like an instrument, it's like a vehicle. It's not a, it's not even something that's necessary. Necessary to experience the illusion, correct. And what happens in the illusion? We are so tired of the illusion that we're talking about it as something and the unborn child desperately wants to escape being born. Oh my God, my life is so, so stressful. I have this problem and that problem and getting older and we have bills and we have bosses and we have bill, you know, all these, all these things, more bills and more stress and whatever is causing stress is very stressful to the unborn child that is then trying to seek, why is life so stressful? Now I need to seek spirituality to ease the discomfort that the unborn is experiencing. But it's not true. 
even in my explanation, I try to find a hard time trying to find things that are stressful. I'm like, okay, bills and, uh, you know, uh, bad weather and, and, and terrible things happening and all that, but nothing's happening. When you know yourself in a real sense, there's just no identification with anything that can, something can be happening to. Even the concept of dying, <clears throat> who's dying? Where will you go after you die when you're everywhere? There's nowhere you are not. And just like in a dream. If you dreamt that you were dying in your dream, where would your little dream soul go within the dream of dying? Well, in a sense, you end up loving yourself more than anything else because there is nothing else, I guess. See, this concept of love, I also believe, came along with the body. Love is just, it's mm -hmm. just the... But, but the devotion, like the devotion for the master, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, because we have this body. That's an absolute devotion to the master because... That's a, that's a type of love, it seems. You have this body that is available to sort of worship your selfless self. And then you have that selfless self-intoxication. And plus there's no deed, no doer. So you're not like begging some God to have good, good times or have good, uh, you know, oh, please help little Brian study for his class or, oh God, please, you know, help me with this or that. No, because you know yourself in a real sense. But it's a type of love because there's like nothing greater or something. Well, see, again, love is a body-based concept. Remaining with your selfless self is beyond love, but you could call it, I guess, self-love, but because you're in love with yourself and the knowledge of existence, but love is a body-based concept. That's why a lot of the spirituality, when it gets into, oh, love, love, love everybody and all this kind of stuff, love is not meant Love is the absence of all conflict, the absence of even peace, the absence of everything. And yet you are, and then you know that you are everything. And there is no separation. So even to say love and be loved, this dissolves. It's sort of like uh, there's no subject object in it. And uh... nothing other than your own self. Even the appearances, you know, are nothing but your own self. And because you're not holding on to a specific local identification and, and, and concentrated on a thought stream of I am someone, you don't see other someones. You're not interacting with other people because you're not a people. That's, you sort of, that's why you see yourself in them and sort of as them. But there's no you to see. There's no... Uh, I guess I'm still... See, there's no seer. There's no concept of seer. There's a pure seeing without the concept of a specific seer because there's no local identification that says from this point I'm seeing or these are my beliefs, or when I see, I see the world through these perspective or whatever. No, there's just like- and The mind is, still trying, mind is still trying to do that then. Well, and mind again, mind came along with the body. Mind can only show you images and projections and ideas and thoughts that came along with the body. When you know yourself in a real sense, uh, mind is, what is it used for? Practical things, you know? Oh, I'm going to buy six oranges and they're $7.99 for three. So this 